The far side of the moon likely has a large new scar on its surface thanks to a wayward rocket predicted to have crashed there just before 7.30 this morning. So experts think it is from a Chinese lunar mission from 2014. But China says it's not theirs. So regardless, the object is expected to carve out a crater about 20 meters in diameter. Experts say it may take weeks, maybe even months, to confirm the impact through satellite images because it is happening on the far side of the moon. That's interesting. All right, so let's dig more into this. Uh, we're joined live right now by Paul Delaney, Professor of Physics and Astronomy at York University. Always appreciate having you on, Professor Delaney. Thanks for being here. So how significant is it, the moon getting hit by this uh, piece of sort of space junk, as it were? Well, it's an unusual event. Uh, we've hit the moon many times deliberately, smashing various upper stage rockets into the moon to hear how it rings to generate what we call moon quakes to probe its interior. But to have a, a piece of space junk, certainly as big as this piece is, this probably is the first time that has ever happened. It's certainly the first time we're aware of it. One might have snuck through without us seeing it, but unlikely, this probably is the first time an accidental piece of space junk has slammed into the moon. Okay, so can you, we understand this may have happened about, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago. So we knew it was going to happen, but because it's on the dark side or far side of the moon, we can't quite see it. So what do we know at this point about what may have happened, or is it going to be a while until we know for sure, Paul, what's actually happened? Well, because it's happening on lunar far side, no terrestrial telescopes can probe the impact area. We have a couple of satellites in orbit. The uh, Lunar Reconnaissance Observer, in fact, is going to be tasked with looking in the, uh, the, the area where we believe the impact has occurred. It's in Hertzsprung uh, Crater, which is on the lunar far side, as I said. Uh, the impact area is going to be small. And, of course, the field of view of LRO is relatively modest. So it could take a while before they're actually able to see it. Uh, but it, they will find it. Uh, they have a very good trajectory for the impact site. And, you know, give us a few orbits, give us a little bit of uh, sort of uh, whodunit type surveillance of that area. We will find it. And that will give us a little added insight into lunar properties. We know pretty well what the size of this rocket booster is, its approximate mass, therefore its impact energy. It's actually becoming a bit of a science experiment. Hmm. Now, could there be any implications here on Earth, Professor, when it comes to, you know, the moon having, having been impacted by this? Only from the point of view of, you know, going forward, we're going to have more and more assets in lunar orbit. We're about to put Lunar Gateway up there over the next few years. We're hoping to put some uh, settlements onto the lunar surface. The moon is going to become a, a whole lot busier if everything goes according to plan over the next 10 years. You really don't want to have errant pieces of junk this size uh, imperiling any of those assets, including, you know, human lives. So there will be fallout, if I can use that term, mm -hmm. back here on Earth. We're trying to tighten our appreciation of space junk to be able to curb the influence of errant pieces of material in Earth orbit. We're going to try and strengthen those procedures now to lunar orbit. So that's the fallout. Uh, we, we don't want this stuff to cause any more of a hazard than it already does. Okay, and just really quickly before I let you go, Professor, does it matter, China denies it's theirs, does it matter whose equipment it is? It really doesn't. Uh, it probably is a Chinese rocket. All of the evidence points in that direction. But it was set, it was eight years ago, and people weren't paying a whole lot of attention to this sort of thing. So no, it's not a huge issue. But it's yeah. You know, let's not do it again, people. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. Let's do this again. I always enjoy talking to you, Professor Delaney. Of course, Professor of Physics and Astronomy at York University. Thanks again for your time this morning. You're welcome. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Yeah.